G'day, how are you? My name's Steve Hay, this is Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. I thought I did a little bit more veneering last night and I thought I'll go straight to live and you can see what happens and if it worked out, if it didn't work out, then I've got to do another lot and I'll show you how to fix an air bubble in a harp neck. We did uh, a couple of days ago when I veneered this edge on this harp, folk harp here. I've got an air bubble and it's right there. I'll show you how to fix it. <coughs> and we'll have a look see to see how this turned out that I did last night. And I've got another soundboard to veneer a different way. So all experimentation as it were. And uh, I've, I can't find the phone, lost my phone. So I'm using my tablet, my tablet's nearly out of power. So I've got it on charge at the moment, but hopefully we'll be up and running and um, I can get into the chat room as well. <coughs> I'm just seeing if it's coming through. <coughs> at the moment it's not, which it should be. There I am live. Okay, let's see if we can get... you have an old PC lying around? Yeah, I've got a lot then of them. this video is for you. No, don't. I'm not interested. Go away. I want to do my stream. I don't want to watch videos. Oh, Vince, good morning. G'day, John. How are you? Lovely to have you on board. G'day, T-Bone. Uh, Andy. Well, you're, you're uh, up and early. And Lawrence. G'day. And Barbara Doherty. Thank you so much for dropping in. Welcome to the workshop. Okay, so I'm going to have to sort of look around there. Let's see if I can find an extension cord. Wait a minute. If I can find an extension cord, I can do that. Oh, on the bench. Oh, look at that. There's an extension cord. It's plugged into anything. Oh, that'll it. Good stuff. So now I can put my tablet on charge and have it over here. So I don't have to be rude and turn my back on you. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that can go there, that can turn off, that can come out of there. That can go into there. I'm at 30%, which should be a good thing. All right. <coughs> so I veneered uh, another soundboard last night. I've found the, the most gorgeous piece of Queensland maple and all this stuff on the bench, this is just weights. So what I did, put the high glue on, which I haven't turned on yet, which I should. There you go. Um, I just put high glue on, used a veneer hammer, hammered it down, got to clear the veneer hammer up, and then grab whatever weights I could around the place. A bucket of water is a great weight because a litre of water is a kilo, so I don't know, this is a not eight or nine kilo bucket, that's eight or nine kilos, which is a good weight to put in the router, it's a good weight. It's not just an excuse to be messy, it was actually serving a purpose. Oh, and a couple of chopping boards I had lying around, they worked. Let me put this over here. So those of you that have been following my streams, I'm making harps and because there is not very much information and definitely people that make harps aren't willing to share their information, I'm having to do a lot of experimentation and trial and error. At the moment I've got one, two, three, four, five, six harps on the go and each one is built to the same style but I have done subtle differences. This soundboard I've done here, I've veneered one side. Now, the general consensus when you're veneering onto plywood is whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other side. So my thinking is, if this is going to be placed on um, a sound box, 
it's going to be anchored, so I don't know if I need to veneer the other side. The one I'm going to veneer after this, I'm going to veneer both sides. And then I've got solid timber ones, some that I, uh, what would you call it, tape it off. So the middle of the soundboard, give you an idea, the middle of the soundboard is five mil thick or just under a quarter inch thick. And then out here on the edge, it's three mil. So I sort of faded it out. It's meant to give it a better ring. This particular one is five mil all the way across. So I'm going to see if that makes a difference. And we'll just find out <clears throat> if all these so-called rules or best practices or whatever <clears throat> is a load of malarkey or there is some substance to it. And sometimes it's the only way you are. And no, you're not going to get the right answer. Okay, let's do the unveiling of this one. There you go. That one's pretty, pretty nice and flat. Now this is on 2mm aeroplane ply and as you can see this is quite a lovely piece of veneer. That's Queensland maple and look down there you actually got a bit of a bow in it but that's okay because it's going to get nailed to a frame which is around here somewhere. Oh this one. It's going to be put on the front of this one here. And it's got ebony and maple at the back, and then it'll be maple on the front and an ebony string band. It, it, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I've, I haven't worked out if I'm going to put an ebony one there or a blackwood one. Don't know. And then a brass stringer up the middle for the strings to go through. So that one turned out sort of all right. Uh, the other day, so I might keep that because I'll use it on the next one I'm going to do. The other day I veneered, what am I looking for? There you go. I veneered this neck and I've trimmed it back, but right, where is it? Here, there's a bubble, and if I hold it close to the microphone, you'll hear it. Can't hear anything there? Can you hear that? It's got a soft sound. That means there's air underneath there. So it's good here. Good here, good here, but right there, there's an air bubble. So you, there's various ways of doing it. Um, depending on the job, you could get a knife and put a little knife cut in there. Where are we? You could put a little knife cut in there, squeeze some super glue down and tramp it down. But I can actually see that moving now. But uh, this definitely works with high glue, this technique that I'm going to show you. And sometimes it works with PVA. But I would say 100% of the time it'll work with high glue. And most of the time it'll work with PVA. But I'm going to mark out where it is. Well, I sort of know where it is. And it's right there. And I will fix it in a tick. But I'll just read the chat for the moment because I'm just waiting for something to happen. Oh dear. Slide buffing him is still okay. Yeah, it's amazing when you have a rant. Look, the universe answers you. Oh dear. Very good morning to you, Maxwell. Yeah, look, Your Highness, I've, I've tried to contact her. As I said I would the other day, but um, no, nothing. She might have changed her name or whatever on, on um, Google. But never mind, I will persevere, John. <laughs> I'm always happy, Max. Even when I'm cranky, I'm happy on the inside. Although, although I must admit, the one thing that does get me terse 
is incompetence. Incompetence I cannot stand and there is no excuse for it. Someone's just too lazy or lackadaisical or whatever. I must admit, it gets on me go. All right, where are we up to? Uh, uh, John, question. What are the advantages and the disadvantages? Or is that the topic for another? Day? No, I'm more than happy to, I love uh, to espouse the virtues of high blood. I use it, I wouldn't say exclusively now. Uh, I would say when I'm building furniture, I would use it exclusively. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, when I'm using chopping boards, I use PVA. When I'm doing a lot of this Luthery work, I use Type Bond Original um, as opposed to any other PVA. The reason being, I was told it doesn't have creep, whereas most of the PVAs you get on the market have what they call creep, which means you can glue something together, sand the flat, finish it, and come back in the period of time, whether that period of time be weeks, months or years, and the glue will actually come through the joins that you glued together. And you can sand it back, recode it, and it's going to happen again. It's just one of the inherent um, negatives, I guess, of PVA. I have been told, and I haven't experienced any creep, PVA uh, Type Bond Original goes off very quick and it's not meant to creep. As yet, I haven't had any issues with it creeping. The thing I do love about hide glue, as I demonstrated the other day, and I'm actually gonna put it up as a short later on. Um, if you wanna take it off, you just put a heat gun on, get a chisel underneath it, and you can just sweep the veneer off, and you can use it again in most cases. Uh, hide glue itself is, well, if you wanna go down the road, it's a natural glue, it's from protein. Um, not just people, oh, it's just, what do they call it? Hooves and hoof glue, it, it's not. I mean, there's all sorts of other things. Basically, it's gelatine. If you like jello or aeroplane jelly, you're eating high glue and it's just a bit more refined, got some food coloring in it and some food. Um, what I'm about to show you here is another benefit of high glue, which I like it. And it lasts, I mean, you go on YouTube and, well, you're on YouTube now, aren't you? Um, and a lot of people say, oh, if you use high glue, you've got to throw it away. That's absolute nonsense. I've had high glue for six weeks in the glue pot. And some of you might remember the old Twitch days when I actually blew some rancid glue on all over my face. That wasn't nice. But really, if it hasn't got mould on it, use it. You'll know when it's off. You will know when it's off. Believe me, it stinks. But we've had very high temperature here in the last two weeks, up around the mid-30s to 40s. And when I'm in the shop, I've got the, the air conditioner on, which is a nice 23 degrees. Um, but the glue doesn't go off. It's out, so I just add more water. So that's why I like hide glue, John. Uh, dear. Yeah, look, it's, um, you can get I won't mention the brand, but you can get liquid hide glue. Personally, I don't like it. It doesn't go off as quick as hide glue that I use, which is, oh, oh <laughs> haven't got, got a big tub of it down there. It's a granulated form that I just melt and then uh, up. And I, after using that for so long, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the liquid hide glue, but they do tell me it works well. So if it works, it works. Let me I need some more water. I'll go out with a tap in a minute. This uh, high glue here that I was using last night has gone a little bit thicker than I would like. When I mix it, it's got to be between 55 and 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, they reckon if it goes above that, I do lose some of the adhesive qualities. I haven't found it, but people have told me that happens. And I the consistency of a good enamel paint when it comes off the brush. So I can have it about eight inches out of the pot and the line won't break. It'll be a solid drizzle of glue. Here you go. Oh, I've moved the iPad since then, so that's good. Lawrence, I've got a lock of lacquer. What? I have a lot of... I have a lot of a lack of confidence, but I still, oh mate, it's the only way to get it done. I've, 
Yeah, my, my grandkids say, oh, how did you do that? You did it first time. No, I've, I've stuffed things up more times than you've tried them. And that's the only way you're going to get it is just a friend of mine who quotes his grandfather's favourite saying, when you're trying something new, give yourself permission, say, this is the first time I'm going to stuff it up. And uh, it's amazing. You, you take that pressure off, whereas I think I said in a recent video, a lot of people, oh, we can't fail, we've got to get it right the first time. No, you'll eventually get it right, but it won't be the first time. Um, Jeff Hanna used to say to me when I was uh, learning from him, <laughs> don't worry about speed. Get it right and the speed will come. So if you can't do something, slow down. Slow down. I'm, I'm taking harp lessons at the moment. And my harp teacher's going, no, you're playing too quickly. You're playing too quickly. And like there's three seconds between and I'm still playing too quickly, but it's true. So, where are we up to? Isis over a bit called Lazy Isis, which strikes. <laughs> yeah, not, you can't be. Oh, dear. But that was, that was Andy's. I suffer from a bit. You're not. You, you, I, I admire you, Andy. You actually stay up late to watch me in case I'm on. <laughs> Oh, uh, dear. Yeah, I've got very, very little tolerance of them, Max. And lack of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is experience turned in... Oh, hey, I'm going to be a philosopher now. I'm philosophizing. I just made this one up, but it sounds good. Knowledge is experience turned into positive memories. There you go. Ah, oh, all right. Now, get this bubble out. What I'm going to do is don't use the best iron in the house because that could result in lumps on the head. This is an old one I've had for And this bubble here, all I'm going to do is iron it. Now, what happens when I... Let me just spin that around a bit. There you go. When I heat that, because this is a... Actually, I might even put a rag under that. Because uh, animal glue or PVA will do the same, when you heat it, it actually reactivates, it melts. So what I'm doing here is melting it with hot iron, pushing it down, so the glue then also acts the glue underneath it. Now if I've done that right, still a little bit to go there. Um, the reason I'm using a rag too is you can burn the timber, but on this, I've actually put glue on the outside of the veneer. So when I put the hot iron on it, it melts the glue and then gets stuck. That's getting a lot better. Okay, we've still got a bit there, I don't know why. Um, those of you that have seen me for a while too, I double glue and this is another reason for double gluing. I know I've got glue on both surfaces so it should hold. And this might be one of those exceptions where it doesn't, I don't know. But we'll give it a shot. Okay, right there. That is being a bit ornery. Okay, so what we'll do is, I don't know. There's always one, isn't there? There's always one. Where's a... If this doesn't work, we'll go to the other one. 
Okay, that's not working. So we'll go to the one I don't like using, but it will. If I can find some. Oh, hang on, I'll just go outside and grab some. I thought I had some in here. Super glue, oops, here we go. Super glue, knife, find out where it's kicking up. Just run a knife down there. Well, the other thing is you can just start again. So I'm pushing that all the way in. All the way in there. Picking up. You could use PVA, I guess. Yeah, I will give you a word of warning. Super glue sometimes reacts chemically with other timbers. I've seen it done on, um, I think it was Scottish sycamore. And yeah, it was very sad. It ended up turning the job green which wasn't very nice at all. Just hold that down and see what happens. Worst case scenario, I'll just rip this off and we'll do it again. So while I'm holding on to this, oh, I can read the chat. Oh dear. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Native Americans, you left over deer holes. 